Is the marriage a contract in Islam? Is it? I'm waiting for your answer. Is the word marriage a contract? I'm just waiting for you. <clears throat> if it's a marriage, you don't use the word contract. You say, if you are married to this person, you do this. We don't say a contract. Contract is something we use as a legal term for an agreement between two people usually. Either they will do, it's a business. That's why it's called contract. It's a marriage contract between two people. Okay, let us, let us go with this. So how we can confirm that this is a marriage contract between two people? If the one person, he can cancel the contract. If one person can let you go and the other person is employee, so contract between marriage or marriage of a contract is between two people who they have equal right. Both we agree, right? But in Islam, no, this is a contract of sexual contract. There's an employee and there's an employer. The employer, he can fire the employee. This is a sex contract. Anytime he wish, and he can hire up to four. Are you with me? Can the women cancel the contract by divorcing the guy saying to him, you are divorced by one word? Or there's only one employ employ employer? Who is in charge of this contract? You see the Quran saying here, speaking to the men. The verse here is speaking about what you do with women. So this is a speaking to the men who they are holding the contract. The women, she don't hold the contract. So if the contract is between two, so why are one, one person only in control of the contract? Are you with me? How many people are in control of this contract? Husband agree to pay mahar to women and to agree both party to short in short that that is a contract. Okay, let's go with this. I will take what you are saying into consideration, but what you just said. is kind of funny. Be my witness people. Marriage is a contract between two people, right? When Aisha, she married Muhammad, did she agree to marry Muhammad at the age of six? Or it was a sex contract? Guys, is that a fair question? Contract, let me put what he said in the screen. Marriage is a contract between two people. Okay, we will go with that. When Aisha, she is she become a wife of your prophet. Did she agree in the contract? And she was at the age of six years old. Was she part of the contract? I'm waiting for your answer. Here you will notice, I'm not changing the topic, was Muhammad married or not? I don't believe Aisha, she was six or nine, that's mean you are the Muslim anyway. You are even accusing your prophet wife to be a liar, who care? I don't believe she was six or nine, who care, you know? Actually, okay, hold on. You are saying you don't believe that she is six or nine. Why you don't believe that? Because this is a this question destroy everything you just said. Because if the if there is a marriage and it's a contract between two parties, 
then we have to have two parties, not a child. If we go to the Quran, the chapter of the divorce, there's a chapter in the Quran called divorce chapter, just to make you happy. Okay? Look what it says. In this verse, verse number four, is speaking about girls who they have no menstruation yet. They are little children. So this is about divorce. You see, when we say the word nikah does not mean marriage, doesn't mean that the Muslim didn't believe they are marrying. No, we believe that they are getting married. But the word nikah still means intercourse. <laughs> There's no marriage really. It's just an, a contract for sex. Read carefully with me. And those... Uh, who uh, hear the Quran is teaching you uh, how you deal with women who you want to divorce them supposedly, right? Okay. And then he says, and for those who have no courses, i.e. still immature. <laughs> so why you don't believe Aisha, she was a child? And why you are saying to me it's a contract between two parties when they are immature? This is a chapter 65, verse number four. So you Muslims, when you say nikah, you are not making a marriage contract. You are making sex contract, including children. And the proof in front of you. And now we are talking about divorcing those children and still they are immature. So at what age do we marry them? If, you, if this is a marriage? We are trying not to use the F word. At what age you did F? So if this is really a marriage, you are the one who gave us, and thank you very much for giving us a definition, that marriage is a is a contract between two people, right? Okay, those immature people. How you how you marry them? Sixty five four, sixty five four people. Why why you are putting wrong numbers? Sixty five four, sixty five four. The divorce chapter sixty five four. So husband agreed to pay mahr to women, and that is to be agreed by both parties. This is what you said. So when in his, in, according to you, marriage only happen when there's both party agree. So how you are divorcing children, how they can be both party? Because those hadith are akbar. My friend, I'm showing you Quran now. Right? And when you say those akhbar, isn't it the whole Quran is a hadith? Isn't it the Quran says that the best of the hadith is the Quran? And now I'm showing you the Quran. We are talking about divorcing children. And you are the one who gave us definition that marriage is a contract between two parties. How you contract with the children to marry you? You are not. You are hiring them for sex. And who you hire? Who is the one who take in charge? The one who will get payment, the father. So it's a sex contract by the one in charge of the female, not by women. Uh, uh, the Muslim in the in the Sharia they say if a woman she is uh, divorced, you know, previously married or widow, she can be in charge of this what you call contract, right? But the word nikah, as you see, is a sexual practice, and you get paid for it. And now we are talking about a contract, sexual contract, between adult man and a child. And as you see, I'm showing you Quran, I'm not showing Hadith. And when you say to me, I don't accept the Hadith, well, if you don't accept the Hadith, then you don't accept Islam, because all of Islam is based on the Hadith. When we show you chapter 4, verse 24, it says, Muta. Are you against the muta or would you the muta? You see, just to show you that Islam is not really, does not teach marriage. Because when the Quran says in chapter 4, verse 24, pay them for enjoying their private part, is that because this is a marriage or this is a muta? It's not about children, it's about women, nisa who have an absent menstrual period, well, uh, uh, inshallah, you are an ignorant. 
it's in the front of you it says that the, the ones who never have their period yet because they are young I feel sorry for you my friend you are trying to deny but it's not working hmm. look guys what he said You see, I'm, I'm using what you say to me as an as a as a as a tool against you. Thank you for posting those comments. Chapter sixty-five is not about children; it's about women. Nisa, Nisa, Nisa mean women. First of all, the word Nisa does not really mean women. It it mean one of the meaning women, but this is. Uh, 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 like a gender it's about gender and the proof of that here we go your Quran saying that those who never have the demonstration of their because of their young age do you see it so if they are women how they became women and they don't have menstruation yet are you with me if they never have menstruation yet, how they are women? Do you know what the word women mean? So are you a foolish person or what? They call you a man for a reason. They call you a boy for a reason. They call, they call the girl a girl for a reason. They call her a woman for a reason. So if she is a woman, then why she don't have a menstruation yet? If we go to the interpretation, just to show everybody that you are making things up, chapter 65, verse number 4, here we go. And again, this is your Islamic website. I have nothing to do with it. And those are your scars, and you are nobody. Those are supposed scars, right? Okay. This is verse number 4. Let us see what they will say. It's not about uh, about children's. Let us see. Okay. It says here, the one who have not yet menstruated, uh, menstruated because of their young age. Do you see it? You, you see, it look like you have your own understanding of your religion or what I can do about it. I mean, those are your scholars saying because they're young age. <laughs> <laughs> look like you have different religion so can you can you give me one scholar he agree with you that this is not about young little girls so it's again it's a sex contract those who have not yet menstruated because of their young age This is your scholars and so you Muslim understand this for all those centuries and now today you are coming to correct them look like you are the scholar not them I mean obviously those scholars are dummy and you are the smart one who knows Islam very well all right read with me here this is Ibn Abbas this is the cousin of your prophet this is the first witness of Islam he says because they are too young what about waiting period for those who they do not have menstruation because they are too young the other one the translation says just the word young which is false by the way because both of them they confirm they are too young too young so this is Ibn Abbas, the cousin of your prophet, and your prophet, he prayed for him to be the ink of, 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 uh, of uh, scholarship. The first scholar of Islam. And you are coming to me, you says you don't agree. This is not about, uh, this is, the chapter is called the chapter of Nisa. And Nisa is about the gender. It's not about them being really women. And as you see, and remember, we are divorcing those little girls. This is the time of the divorce. They are still too young. So what the age was when they were doing nikah. So 
the most time they argue they say well you cannot do divorce unless you are doing nikah but nikah obviously is a sexual contract the divorce is is the cancellation of the sex contract and there's rules follow with this sex contract so you try to make it marriage but there is no marriage as you see and you are the one who says marriage is an agreement between both party what both party they are too young which party you are agreeing with you will say to me the father well are you going to f the father why you are making the agreement with the father not with the wife you said to me between two parties which parties let me ask you inshallah according to Islam when you do make an agreement of nikah you do it with the father of the girl or with her if she is a virgin I'm waiting for your answer guys wait for his answer if you want to do nikah contract you do it with the girl if she is a virgin or you have to do it with the father I'm waiting for your answer. The answer is very simple. You do it with the father. If she is a widow, you do it with the women. Why? Because it's a sex. She is already in the sex business. Those are classical scholars of post were not medical expert ah, we have to be medical expert your prophet was medical expert hmm. your prophet was medical expert he's asking you to wait three months after divorce to be sure that she have no baby even they don't have menstruation yet and do you see how medical your god is as long they are not medical expert so why you follow Muhammad? Was he a medical expert? He was Dr. Muhammad. And is your God Allah as a medical expert? A marriage contract should be between wife and husband. So Muhammad, he contract with who? When he married Aisha. Those girls we contract with who? And if you go right now and search in Prophet Google, you will see that you do the contract with the father, not with the wife. You do it only with the women if she is a widow or the, uh, pre previously married if she is a virgin you do the contract with the father because she is not expert in the business she did not do it before so those are classical scholars so should we follow new scholars islam is a new religion now and the old scholars they don't know what they are talking about and they are not expert in women okay yeah hmm. but allah is wt understands everything <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> you get you get me busted now, and they made errors when they address science. I like that. You know, do your God make make error when they address science? If this is not an error, why you have to wait three months for a, for a child? She did not have their period. Or let us say a woman. Why you have to wait for three months? A woman, they are old. It says, a woman who they are old. They are old. Why you have to wait three months? Secondly, what is the, how many years a Muslim woman, she can carry a child from previous husband? According to Islam, more than 10 years. Some, they say, unlimited. Your prophet himself was born four years after his father's death. And you know, for me, it's you who said that the word nikah mean two things. Everybody is my witness. Mean the F word and mean marriage. So the question, how we can separate between them. Correct people? If he is the one who said the word nikah, let us go to the first uh, comment he made. Let us see where it is. He is the one who said that, not me.
I will try to find it. As long the word nikah mean intercourse and mean marriage according to you. Here we go. This is your statement, not my statement. Thank you for your support, my friend. We appreciate your support very much. Helping us against us now. I'm very grateful. Here we go. This is your words, not mine. Nikah has two meanings. It can mean sexual intercourse and it also mean marriage. So when you go, you say to a Muslim woman, you say to her, I want to do nikah. It's mean, I want, I'm saying to her, I want to F you and marry you. This is what you just said. Is that your statement or mine? Is it you who said that? So you are trying to argue, but already in, in from the beginning you gave me you give me the pass. You said to me, This is true. The word nikah mean intercourse. So how we convert the word intercourse into marriage? Are you with me? How the word intercourse become marriage? This God, he could not find better word. We have many words in Arabic. Zawja, zawj. So when you say nikah, simply you are speaking about the physical action. If you go to the dictionary, you see that the word nikah means tanakahatul ajjar, which means the branches of trees, they go inside each other. This is what nikah means. One physical object going inside another physical object. And you can open the dictionary right away. No, I see. I don't agree that it means marriage because how it cannot be intercourse and marriage at the same time. You see, you, you are you are just you are being funny now. How it can be a marriage and it is intercourse? How how that can be? How I how I you know how you are saying to me this is the F word. In the same time, you are saying to me, the F word mean marriage. I mean, do you even read what you are saying? In one hand, you agree that this is the F word. In the same time, you are saying to me, don't you agree that the F word mean marriage? <laughs> no, it's the F word. What Islam does, he considers the F word marriage. The sexual act is what you call marriage. So you call it marriage, no problem, but still it's the F word. So you are in total agree with me. I agree it has two meaning, but you do you agree that nikah is a both meaning? No. <laughs> you don't go to a woman, you say, I want to F you, and that you, she will accept to be your wife. <laughs> This is savage. This is stupid. This is not marriage. Actually, I challenge any Muslim in the Middle East to go to a, to a woman and say to her, I want to do nikah to you. I challenge you right now to go to a Muslim chat, like in Palto, say, I want to do nikah. They will, they will F you right away. They will, stay, they will curse you. They will bounce you from the chat room. Nobody uses this word nikah. It's an insult. It's like saying, I want to F your daughter. Go and say, I want to do nikah to your daughter. Let's see what will happen. They will shoot you in the head. No, what you showed me, my friend, that the word nikah in those chapters is obligation of you doing the intercourse. So if you don't do intercourse yet, you are a person doing nikah, you know, because now you Muslims are mixing between the F word and marriage. So now you are showing me a chapter speaking about marrying a woman supposedly, but you are saying at the same time it is the F word. <laughs> so the second we say the word nikah, according to your agreement, we are saying the F word, and according to you, we are saying marriage at the same time. And when your prophet, he said, when your wife, she had menstruation, do with her everything except nikah. 
everything you do with her. Do with them everything. Okay, do what? Sexual relationship. Except what? Except nikah. And already you agree that the word nikah means intercourse, right? Okay. But why Muhammad is repeating the word nikah if they are married? Why he doesn't say a different word? If the word nikah in the Islamic community at that time mean marriage, then this is doesn't make sense. You should not say do everything except nikah because already they are married. So obviously in the time of Muhammad, still this word is used as the F word. Do you agree, Mr. Inshallah? Correct, guys? Isn't it obvious? That in the time of Muhammad and Muhammad himself is using the word nikah as a word for the F word. If the word there at that time, let us say, because maybe, maybe, uh, maybe, maybe before Muhammad it was the, the word nikah was the F word, and then in the time of Muhammad the, 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 the language changed and it became, but this is not the scenario as you see. Muhammad saying, do with them everything, all kind of sexual relationship except nikah. What the Muslim they translate that they translate except intercourse. Do you see it? So if the word nikah mean marriage, and yeah, there is a there is a there is a hadith about you know doing nikah to your hand, doing nikah to water mirror, <laughs> shaitan doing nikah to himself. Uh, come on, marrying what? When Shaitan Allah created for him a penis and the right a thigh and the vagina and the left a thigh, and then he do nikah to this by that. But anyway, this is way more powerful than all the other hadith because this is Muhammad and this is Sahih, as you see. They can't say it's weak. Can you cover the problems of for the Christians in India today? I don't know what is the problem for Christian in India. I will leave that for a Christian Indian to do because I don't know. I have no knowledge of anything. Do we have any Muslim he can try better? So when Muhammad he says do everything except do nikah, obviously still the word F word is used in the time of Muhammad for the word nikah. And that is shown us that Islam does not respect marriage. Because the word marriage, if we go in the Quran, we will find the word marriage is exist. It is exist. Why we don't use it? We don't need to use the word nikah. We do not need it. We have a way better, you know, way more, you know, a uh, 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 word better to use. But still, Muhammad, even that word, he used it in a very filthy way. Read carefully. But if you intend to replace a wife, what is where is the word wife there? There is no word wife. It is zawj. Zawjun makanu zawj. How in the world the word zawj makanu zawj became a wife? Read carefully and love. Because there it says after that speaking about female ihdahunna. Okay, if you intend to replace a wife by another wife, how this is a marriage then? How she is a, a wife and you are replacing a wife by other wife? This is not a marriage. This is a sex contract. So you are replacing, you are exchanging. Actually, the word here is tabdala. It's exchanging, not just replacing. It's tabdala. This is religion. Inshallah, do you Muslim replace a wife instead of wife? Is that what marriage is about? Is that, you see, when I said to you this is an employment contract, it is an employment contract. You exchange the employee by another employee. Look, 
if you wish, if you wish, so you said to me, this is a contract between two. Guys, isn't it him who said to me, it's a contract between two? It's not. There's one person is in charge. If you wish, speaking to who? To the man. If you wish to exchange one wife for another wife. So if it's really a wife, then you don't exchange a wife by other wife. What is that? And then give them some money. This is wages for their service. Thank you for your service. Take care. Take a hike. And look what the Quran using a very filthy word exchange is not using the word divorce to marry a new woman is saying exchange a wife for another wife. How you can do that? Is that me giving you my wife and you give me your wife? Actually, this is true. It's about exchanging women. The Arab, they used to do that and you can go and read my book section Allah and you will see. They used to exchange women. And this is the same thing appear about Muhammad when Allah, he, uh, when Allah, he copied the verse of Umar al-Khattab and he put it in the Quran. Read carefully. Here we speak about divorce, right? This is the wives of Muhammad. It may be if he divorce you all, his Lord will give him instead of you wives. Divorce them all? 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 I gave you two verses already, but you're already in denial. No, I am in agreement with me. You are the one who said that the word sex, the word nikah means intercourse <laughs> and marriage in the same time. <laughs> so it's intercourse. <laughs> so when you Muslims, you say, I want to marry you, you are saying, I want to have you. <laughs> you are the one who said that. And then you say to me, I want to go to chapter 4, verse 25. Do you agree with 4, 20, 24? About the muta? Do you agree with 424? Before we go to 425. Hmm? Do you agree where it says it's forbidden for you married women except those who they are captive? Are you going to do nikah to the captive? Yes. How you want to marry them? They are married. You are not marrying them, they are you are having sex with them, raping them. And actually, the verse you gave me here is a proof again that you are an idiot because it's here it says, and the one who cannot afford to marry, according to your translation, afford to marry a free woman, then let him marry a believing woman made. Where it says marry? Show me. Where it says the word marriage? And why the Quran is favoring a free woman above slave women? This is God? You see, they are the one who gave me this verse, right? There is no muta temporarily marriage in Islam. So why 424 is saying you pay them for enjoying it? <laughs> enjoying what? What translation you like me to show you? And here you are in trouble again. Chapter 25, it says, if you cannot afford, did your Quran say in afford? Afford?
then this is about money. If you cannot afford to get a free woman to have nikah with her, go and find a slave. <laughs> and when you say there's no muta in Islam, so why all Muslims agree? And the Quran says Islam ta'atum bihi, bihi, bihi. Here we go. It says Islam ta'atum bihi. Bihi what? I want, I want your answer. Bihi what? Ah, oh, okay. So you pay her only if you enjoy in the companionship. Ah, but no, it says be he. Be he is an object. Anyone who speaks Arabic, he knew that. And again, we can get you busted. We can go and we can read the interpretation. Here we go. You will see the Muslims agree that this is so what you are doing here you are bringing me your own interpretation which you know who care you can you can do that as you wish but this is not what this is not islam my friend this is your own fiction i feel sorry for you a person he believed that the god of his god he agree to use the f word and this is the same word as marriage hmm. so when your father he married your mother he said i want to if i want to f you in the same time, he is saying, I want to marry you. How nice. Okay, read carefully. You should seek, with your money, marrying women for a great period of time. Zawaj and muta. Read carefully with me, guys. Does it say the word zawaj? Do you see the word zawaj? Why the Muslims, they say, don't nikah muta? Why you are why you are using the word zawaj? Because this is the word for marriage. And the funny, they are using the word zawaj for muta. <laughs> Which means again, even if they use the word zawaj, there's no marriage. Because even muta, which is nothing but sexual intercourse, enjoying for a period of time for paying money, for getting paid. Even muta, they are calling it zawaj. So what, what Islam does call intercourse regardless if it is prostitution or not they call it zawaj they call it marriage but in reality it's not this is why a man he can exchange his wife and he is the one you know he was helping us with the verses a, a man he can exchange the wife but the wife can she exchange the man no if it's a contract between two well, the contract always have to have equal conditions this is not a contract of equal conditions. This is a contract of employer and employee. The employer, he can fire the employee anytime. And here you see that you are marrying a woman and you call it marriage. This is you, Muslim, call it marriage, not me. But this is not marriage, this is prostitution. And you deny that this is in the Quran. You are a liar. Why those people, they will lie? Why the cousin of Muhammad will lie? And this is the official government website of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Uh, oh, this is Abbas. Abbas, Abbas, the scholar Abbas. Abbas, you don't agree that Aisha, she was six years old. <laughs> hey, Abbas, how you doing, man? <laughs> we miss you. <laughs> This is Abbas. Abbas, don't agree this is Muta. And Abbas, don't agree this is about kids. If you say from the beginning this is Abbas, we will love to hear you, man. <laughs> that would be more hilarious if I'm... If I'm... <laughs> and you know, guys, if you copy the video, don't forget to say Abbas agree that nikah means the F word and marriage in the same time. That would be hilarious. <laughs> Abbas, brother, this is Abbas. That doesn't say about kids, Abbas. Like Ab Abbas, those are classic scholars. So uh, uh, Abbas, you follow this? Uh, who's your scholar these days, Mimi? <laughs> those are classic scholar. Abbas, you don't believe in classic scholars. No, classic scholars, they are stupid. You know, the Ibn Abbas, Al Qurtubi, Al Tabari, Al Jalalain, Ibn Kathir, they are stupid. But the donkey himself, he he, he many times he said to me, "Open Ibn Kathir." <laughs> open <Al> Quran. 
So the leaders like that second like scars they are stupid. <laughs> Abbas, how many times you told me, let us read what the scholar they say. How many times you told me open Ibn Kathir? Now you are saying to me, the classic scholars, they don't know medicum. <laughs> the classic scholars, those are, they don't know medical, brother. Yeah. Your prophet was a doctor, Muhammad. You know, you have a PhD in medicine. Hmm. Abbas. Uh, I, I wish you did not say Abbas. <laughs> I wish you did not say that this is you, because now this will be more horrible. <laughs> People will cut this video and they will say Abbas, <laughs> arguing with Christian friends about Nikah, and he agree. The word Nikah have two meaning. <coughs> And this is not about children, brother. Okay, they are they know where it says they are too young. Okay, but scar they say that oh, this is classical scar, they don't know medic medic medicine medicine. Abbas, you know medicine. Abbas, you know everything. Abbas, be honest with me. Do you have high school? Do you have high school? I mean, if you are a doctor, I will say Abbas, Dr. Abbas is speaking. Abbas is a, with my respect to all jobs, by the way, I'm not making fun. But Abbas, as I know, he delivered pizza. But Abbas became a scholar, a pizza scholar. You see, if you say you're a pizza scholar, I will say Abbas. I mean, he speak with his experience. Pizza, you know. He don't even make it, you know, he deliver it. So how Abbas became a scholar, we do not know. But he is. Google, Prophet Google, peace be upon him. Right. Uh, you always say Abbas uh, uh, scholars without mistakes. Ah, you always say they make me. Okay, did your prophet make mistake Abbas? Before you go, do your prophet make mistakes? I want an answer from you, confirming. Do your prophet make mistakes? Abbas. Do your prophet, you see the scholars, they make mistakes. I want the confirmation. Do your prophet make mistakes? Hmm. Abbas is searching Google. Did my prophet make mistake? No, actually, I blocked him. Actually, I remember I blocked him because he's so stupid. You know, so this guy is so arrogant. No, I blocked him because he insulted Jesus. Do you remember? You remember what he said about Jesus? He called and he insulted Jesus. And he says, your Jesus, I'm insulting him because your Jesus is not ours. And I agree. Our Jesus is not his. So he had a very filthy tongue was insulting Jesus. I forgot what he said exactly, but he was insulting Jesus badly. Okay, guys, read carefully. Abbas, he just said something. I will make a video about it, actually. My coming video, Abbas is going to say, Abbas said, my prophet, he made mistakes, but not about, not in religion. Not in religion. So you stupid, why Allah, he says to him, why you forbid yourself what Allah made lawful for you in the chapter of At-Tahreem? Huh? Who is the stupid here? You just said, my prophet did not make a mistake about religion. So why is God saying to him, why you forbid what is made lawful for you? Isn't it this is forbidden part of religion? Isn't it the Muslim they follow what Muhammad say? How he forbid what is made lawful for him? So Abbas, you are just a silly kid and you are a stupid, you do not know your religion. And nothing will change. My prophet did not do mistake when it comes to religion. And then in the Quran have a chapter about his prophet making mistakes in the religion. Is that your God saying why you are forbidding what is not forbidden for you? Are you there? 
the potato. <clears throat> yeah, this coward, you know, I will never forgive him actually for what he said about Jesus. I spit at you, Abbas. You are very filthy. Hey, get lost, coward. Filthy coward. That's why he didn't dare from the beginning to say he's Abbas. This filthy, he said very bad language. And you see, the Muslim they claim that they respect Jesus. And he says that Jesus, the one we believe, is not their Jesus, which is against their religion, but not against mine. Because in his religion, they say that the Christian, they say that Jesus is son of God. So the, the Islam says that the Jesus they are speaking of is the same Jesus we have. This coward, he denied the Quran and he spit at his prophet. He denied that the Quran confirmed that the Jesus we speak of is the same Jesus in their religion. And he says, I am insulting Jesus because Jesus in Islam is not the same Jesus in Christianity. When his stupid Quran confirmed that the same Jesus is the Christians, they believe that he is God. The same Isa they are speaking of. You are a potato. Don't ever come here, Abbas. Unless you make a video apologizing for insulting Jesus. If you don't do that, you are not welcome here. And the reason I am insisting that you do that, because if you truly believe that you are a Muslim, and the Muslim, they claim that they believe and they respect Jesus, then how you are going against your book? Obviously, you are just a trashy person. Filthy mouth. So, repent. Even according to your religion, you have to repent. Shame on you. When your stupid Quran says that the Christian, they say that the Messiah is Allah. They were speaking about who? Our Messiah or different Messiah? Our Messiah. So you filthy you, you deny even your Quran. How many times the Quran speak about the Messiah, our Messiah? How many times the Quran says that the Nansara says the Messiah is this and the Messiah is that? How many times the Quran says the Jews, they said they killed the Messiah, which Messiah? Our Messiah. And then you filthy you, you are just because you are just a kid, you deny it. You don't respect your prophet. And actually this is recorded and people, they have it already. So all Muslims will spit at you for saying such a thing. But you know, we are used to the Muslim these days. As long as you are insulting Jesus, insulting Mary, insulting anyone, it's okay, but don't insult Muhammad. Right? Anyway, guys, we have enough for today. I hope you have a good time. And remember, tell your friends that we are going to be live in this account for now. Until further not, we don't know. I mean, further notice, maybe a month, maybe a week, maybe we don't know. And anytime we lose channels, always you can go to Patreon and you can find the last link I will post and that will update you where is my channel is. Those, those channels are not really important, you know. The number of subscription is not really important for me because it doesn't matter if I have one subscriber or 70 or 80,000 or whatever, you know, it's still, still the same. The same number of people will come, people they will follow, people will search for me and people will come. I say to the to those who are trying to stop me, it's too late. It's too late. You know, maybe this is, can happen, you know, long time ago. But now every single Muslim in the world, he knew Christian friends. And there's no Christian who is interested in the topic he do not know my name. So if you think you can stop me, that is impossible. An open account in YouTube, it takes two seconds. And we have hundreds of them already. All right? So please inform your friends. And always you can get the update in case we lose the channel. Because we might lose this one too. You never know. We might lose the other one. We did not lose it. I just stopped doing broadcast. I mean, I did not go live yet. They gave me a strike. Can you believe it? <laughs> this is how much they are terrified. I did not even go live. I did not even speak about the topic. They gave me a strike. I just put the title and I get strike. Can you believe it? And again, a correction for the mistake I made in the previous video. It was not a mistake, really. It was just, uh, you know, because Nefertiti is the name we, you know, the famous name we used to remember from school. 
So it was not the wife of uh, King Ramses, which is proven Muhammad to be fraud. It is not really Nefer, it's not Nefertiti, it's Nefertari. Nefertari. So when the Muslim they say to you that how Muhammad he knew that uh, uh, the Pharaoh is the one exist in the time of Moses, etc. Tell them then how 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 silly your prophet to think that Asiya bin to Muhazim is the wife of the Pharaoh when it is Nefertari. And this is history have nothing to do with the Christians have nothing to do with the Jews even the Egyptian Muslims agree with it and as you see the article in front of us is written by Egyptian Muslims this is a you know pure history the speaking that the Queen Nefertari she was the wife of the the King Ramses the second and even he married her before he become a king so how Muhammad changed the name and the ethnic the ethnic of this woman from a Nef Nefertari, the Egyptian queen, she is a daughter of a king, to become uh, Asiya bin Muhazim, and she was a believer. And even some Muslims they say she was a Jew. As you see here, they are talking about her as she is the daughter of a king. And this is a Muslim article, by the way. After all, this is a Muslim article. So even in the Muslim articles, they are agreeing that Muhammad is a liar. The wife of the Pharaoh have nothing to do with the woman. Her name is Asiya, Asiya bin Tuhazim. And it is Nefertari. And the king Ramses is the one who was exist at that time. So Muhammad again is a fraud. And remember that Muhammad he says that Allah he told him Allah told him not not a not a person because you know they can say he made a mistake you know about history but Muhammad he claimed that Allah told him that he married him to the wife of the Pharaoh and her name is Asiya bin Muhazim and Mary the mother of Jesus this is how faithy he is he want to have sex with everybody even women who there exist Century, even the sister of Noah, this horny beast, he want to go back even to this. What Muhammad have to do with the sister of Noah? And by the way, was the sister of Noah was a believer? <laughs> anyway, in Islam, everything is possible. You know, garbage in, garbage out. So don't 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 forget to download our videos. As you see, YouTube is targeting us. Download them, share them. And uh, with this, I want to say to you, thank you all for being here. May the Lord bless you. I will try to go live on air tomorrow. We will see. Uh, you know, already we are on Friday. So tomorrow is a Friday. Hmm. I don't know. Friday, usually people will go out, etc. I don't know. I don't go out. But maybe you people, you will be busy. Leave your comment and tell me if you like me to come tomorrow. And we will see from there. But don't forget, please, to leave your comment and make a comment about the topic you we spoke of uh, about verse you so you want to say something about it uh, i want to see people they are really learning taking notes i i enjoy really seeing a comment of people who they are educated smart and maybe i can learn something from you remember all of us we learn from each other all of us we learn from each other here you see, the one who think he is the teacher, I mean, I don't know what, what does that mean, a teacher? Because all of us, we are teachers in somehow. Every one of us can teach somebody else something he do not know, right? So when we speak about teachers, uh, 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 God, he gave us gifts. And all of us, we have it. It's not only for one person. Maybe I have a gift better than yours in debate. Maybe I'm blessed more than you because I speak Arabic. I mean, when it's come to this topic, maybe, maybe, but I'm sure you have way more things than I have. I don't have. So I want to see your intelligence, your thought. I want to see smart talking people teaching each other and teaching me to why not? You know, you might give me an idea. I never heard it before. I never thought about it. All right. So I want to see, I want to see smart 
waves an ocean of smart people speaking talking not just a bunch of people just agreeing whatever this person say i want to see i don't want we, we don't want abdul we want people who search the truth and the truth will set them free you don't have to agree with me even though you might make me upset but it's okay maybe i'm wrong right when uh, uh, you know when you go in the middle east everybody agree with the president why because the president is a is a criminal who dare to question muhammad criminal right so don't take what people say for you for granted when we speak we show you in the screen we show you even what the muslim says we take their calls the purpose of that because we want to show the other side of the story so people they will be judging fairly both sides of the story but as you see if Islam is a good religion and Islam have a value for women, then you don't say if a man he want to exchange his wife. That is not God teaching. Exchange his wife. What do you mean exchange a wife by other wife? Is he a chair? Is she a, a TV? And remember, Islam came long after Jesus, way after Judaism. So, was Muhammad God moving forward for humanity to be better, or he is taking it back to the cave time? Hmm? Was that for the cave time? If you want to exchange a wife with other wife? What does this have to do with God? And why you are giving them such a permission to exchange? You see, I can I say, okay, he divorced her because they don't like each other. Okay, but here they are talking about exchange a wife by other wife. What does that mean? How insulting. So the wife in Islam is not really a wife. She is just an employee. We get rid of her. Ah, as I wish. If you wish, even, even look at the language. If you wish, wish. It's up to his wish. You as a female, you are nothing but a wish. He get rid of you. He take you. He use you. He throw you. He exchange you. This is not from God. You see, Muhammad, he was trying to copy the Jews. And the Jews, they always abuse women. Always. When Jesus, he spoke to the Christian and he spoke to the Jews about divorce. He made it so clear that divorce should be very hard. Why? Because those men, they marry women when they are young, beautiful. When they get a little bit older, ah, he replaced her. He have money. He go and find different women. Okay, you go home. I don't want you no more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You go, go, go. I don't want you. You know. So Muhammad is. A counterfeit of the Jewish behavior toward women they were very aggressive toward women they were always putting women down and even they are using them so Muhammad he was trying to be another, just another Jew but he made it way instead of even to be a Jew he could not be a Jew he made it just a sexual contract So the Jewish, they have their own tradition. And many of them, they are not following the Bible. Muhammad is trying to copy from a tradition to make it his own Quran. And then he abused women by making it so easy to exchange women, to divorce them, to marry them, if we can call it marriage. And as you see, even the Muslims agree that the word nikah mean the F word, yet they say it's marriage. That alone is a big insult for this God in heaven who could not find a better word to use instead of the F word to make it marriage. You know, the best thing about, about marriage, yes, the man, he liked the women because she is a woman, right? So the gender is important and the women, she liked the man because he's a man. That's not, not the question about it. But in the same time, the marriage is based on a noble reasoning 
not in intercourse. When God he created Adam and Eve, he created one Eve to one Adam. So why Islam they want to have too many Eve for one Adam? What went wrong? What's the problem? What one Eve cannot do, many Eve can do. Why a man he need more? Even their heaven is a sexual heaven. So this is a very sexual religion. Women, she is just a toy to use and abuse. If you wish, you exchange them. If you wish, you replace them. If you wish, you marry them. If you wish, you divorce them. If you wish, you if. If you wish, you don't. Once a Muslim woman, she left Islam and she said, I did not leave Islam because of you. I left Islam because I discovered that Islam is made by the man for the man. And this is exactly what it is. What she said is absolutely true. Islam is a religion made by the man for the man. Muhammad, he wanted fighters to conquer and give him more slaves for sex, for money. So he promised all the promises for men and the women, they are just an object. Who care? This is why Aisha, she said, I never saw a, a suffering woman as much as a believing woman. So Aisha in his time, she witnessed that the most suffering women are the believing women, not Christian women, believing in Muhammad, because Muhammad is their God. So we need to remember that you as a Christian, when you get married, you don't marry for sex. Even though sex is part of the marriage. The marriage was a gift from God to have a companion. And then he gave us another gift that we can do reproduction. We can have another gift. We're having babies, children. That is a gift. So the sex is a process for a better, let us say, noble, noble uh, 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 mission. It's not exist for itself. If a human being don't have a sexual joy, trust me, nobody will marry it. Nobody will get married. Because there's no attraction between the male and the female, right? So the marriage, a huge part of it, and we cannot deny that, is a sexual relationship. But there's something more noble than the sex. The sex is to bring the two gender together. She find in the man what she don't have, and he find in the woman what he don't have. The woman she is loving, caring, uh, uh, kind, etc. The man is the tough, the one who brings protection, the provider, the hard worker, etc. So both they complete each other, but the man alone is not really uh, able to provide life without a woman. Can you have a baby without a woman? No. Can the women have a baby without a man? No. So both of them, they make a company and that company can give a gift. And the gift have to be gift of love, not gift of sex. So a man, he sleep with a woman, he should be loving her. And the purpose of he being with her is not just to sleep with her and then he throw her when he's done. The purpose of sleeping with her because she is his wife and he want to have a family he want to have a children's he want to have a new life he want to establish his own family the continue of life but it's not 3d6 because if a man he go for a woman just because of sex then then he have no wife any woman is is a target then the word wife is not legitimate actually to use. Why we need wife? If we all just exist for sex, then any woman can do that. Any man can do that. You do not need to have a partner as a wife or a husband. So when Islam speak about muta, this is telling us Islam is a hippie religion, does not respect marriage, and marriage does not exist. And the funny is they call muta marriage, even muta, which is temporarily for contract of three days or two days of sexual relationship. How in the world you call it marriage? 
So Islam destroyed the very basic of family. This is why Islamic family doesn't exist. I remember when I was a kid, I went to, you know, I was a kid and there's a, in my school, Muslim kids, I go to their house. The kid, he was saying to his brother, F to your mother. I said to him, how do you say that to your, to your mother? He said to me, oh, his mother is not my mother. My mother is not his mother. Muhammad destroyed the family. There's no family no more. I remember one one of the kids. We went with him. He said that he want to buy some candies. So we went to his dad. He want to get some uh, like some coins. His dad. He said to him, "You are the son of who? He is. He's the father. He don't remember. He don't know who is the son of who. He know this is his son, but he don't know which wife. The father is very old." He's asking his son, you are the son of who? Which wife? What is the family? So when they speak about having a, a, a high uh, birth rate, but there's no family, the family is destroyed. The family is, is ruined. The children are ruined. Uh, uh, drugs, hashish, theft crimes it's a flourishing all over because there's no family who take care of the kids who educate the kids who will tell the kids what is right or what's wrong when the father don't even know how many kids he have right <clears throat> Uh, somebody is saying he is looking for debate between me and Sheikh Uthman. Well, Sheikh Uthman is a potato coward. Anyway, my friend, your Sheikh Uthman, he agree that Muhammad is not from the Abrahamic faith. And your Sheikh is not a Sheikh anyway. I mean, this guy is a Sheikh. Go watch my videos exposing his lies. When your Sheikh, he says, he said the truth. And now, from now on, I, I will support him. He said that Muhammad was not Abrahamic. Watch and laugh. He, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? He, he doesn't know who Gabriel is. But I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. Quran is mentioned. If this book you hear it? This is your Sheikh Uthman. So if this guy, he speak to me for a second, he already accepted that Muhammad is nothing but a pagan person. The funny is the Muslim, they're saying, I would like to see debate face to face. What face to face would do? Here we go. One of my fan, he he got him busted. <laughs> this is not a Christian prince. He made him shish kebab, and he made him agree. And the, the funny is the Christian saying, ah, listen, listen. I like what in this guy he said this. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> listen, listen. He, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. Quran is mentioned. <laughs> so Muhammad did not know the Abrahamic faith. He is not from Abrahamic faith. He did not know who is Jibreel. So who is Muhammad? He is nothing but a pagan. This is your sheikh. Do even this guy even dare to, to, to talk to me? So all the Muslims scam about Muhammad is Abrahamic, destroyed by the Abdul. He do not know what Abrahamic faith. He is not from the Abrahamic faith. He do not know Jibreel. Why? Because the Arab, they were pagan. But I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. Quran is mentioned. <laughs> and this is the same guy he said to uh, to uh, to uh, uh, to, a, uh, to a Christian the prophet he did free Mary the Copt and he honored her and he married her and I made a video about it everybody is laughing every single Muslim agree and even I played videos for sheikhs from his country saying that Muhammad he did not marry Mary the Copt it's a lie this is the guy you are mentioning to me. You are just an idiot. Yeah, I keep I keep waiting for such a debate. It will never happen because you have a you have a female burqa, you know. You have a female burqa who will never dare to talk to me. Never. All of those they have the same excuse. You see them in YouTube. 
we will debate him only face to face because they are running away from debating me. How come they debate uh, David Wood in the internet, in YouTube? Anthony Roger, many people. How come with me only face to face? How come Apostle Prophet, nobody says to him face to face? Why only me? Because simply they have to bring an excuse. All of them, they share the one thing. Face to face, excuse. Well, my friend, I am your God. Allah worship me and you cannot see my face. Deal with it. Your God, Allah, he is a person. I don't want to say I am Allah because Allah is not good as I am. I have to admit. And I am a sinner, but I am not that faithy like Allah. But look what Allah he says. Uh, Allah never spoke to anyone except from behind a burqa. Chapter 42, verse number 51. Uthman the bully, he says, a Christian prince wearing burqa, your God is the burqa God. You are making fun of your God. Here we go. Allah never spoke to anyone except from behind the veil. And I find it very funny that the Muslims try to bully me, saying the word burqa. So are you saying to me that the word burqa is something to insult? Okay. For Mimi Hijab, his last name is burqa. This is his last name. And your God Allah, he is wearing a burqa. Is your God Allah female? Why Allah speaking from behind the veil? Any Muslim can tell us? He's naked? He's wearing short? Why is that from behind the veil? Secondly, are you saying to me that the veil can it stop the light of Allah? Any Muslim can explain the veil? How, how the light of Allah can be hidden by a curtain? How the curtain can stop the light of Allah? Whatever this veil is, it's hiding Allah. How in the world does God light his glory, as Muslim they say, can be hidden by a burqa. Is this burqa anti-fire? Anti-X-ray? How thick this burqa is? It's made from what? Hmm. And that's the question. Muslim will never go for it. So you will notice always the Muslim to try to bully anyone. He is a terrifying person for them. And actually even the one who is not, they try to bully them. But because bully doesn't work with me, and I laugh at it. You know, they try to bully uh, uh, Apostle Prophet, uh, speaking about him, about his wife, uh, what is the other guy, and all of them, you know, I mean, they are very savage, very trashy. Remember one thing, when you fight this religion, you have to be strong. You have to be really strong because they will try to bully you. So if you are a person who can be infected by bullying, don't don't go in that direction. You have to be a person who don't care what they say. Walk straight and keep, keep your head up. Let the dogs park. Dogs are dogs. You cannot make them lions. Lions, they don't do bullying. Lions they come and debate those who they claim they can refute them. There's no need for bully. Even their God, he was a bully. When the God of Muhammad, he made a bully chapter about Muhammad uncle. There's a chapter about it. Imagine. Bully. Have you ever heard of a God saying, Hey, the wife of uh, uh, Abu Lahab, she will carry uh, a load from uh, wood. Like, what is that? The bully God? This is the chapter. It's not even five verses, if we can call it verse. 
Oh, uh, I, uh, perish Abu Lahab and uh, perish what he own. Uh, his wealth uh, is not going to give him and he will belong in a flaming fire and his wife she carry uh, wood, uh, wood carrier and she have uh, in her neck uh, a, a necklace from uh, uh, a fiber balm of, uh, what is that? Bully? Do you ask yourself why is God the one who created the universe? He put his head down to the head of Abu Lahab so if I was existing at the time of Muhammad, Allah will make a chapter for me? Do you see the bully God? What is this? Why this God? I mean, this guy is nobody. He's a human being. Just, you, you can delete him. You're God. You know, you, you can just move your finger. He's done. What is this? This is a God in disability. He's just rumbling, saying nothing except stupid things. His wife, she will carry wood, and she have a fiber from palm tree necklace. What does that mean? Refute them, debate them if you want. Prove them wrong if you want. And instead of making a drama, make a miracle for Muhammad so they can see he's a prophet. This is the chapter 111. Chapter 111. <clears throat> so, this is going to be from God, the bully chapter. God will not go in that in, in that law down, you know? Like, you see, you look at Jesus. Jesus, they were cursing him, putting nails in his hands, etc. Forgive them, Father, they don't know what they are doing. The God of Muhammad is making cursing verses to the uncle of Abu, uh, uh, Muhammad. And the funny, it says, the Quran says that Allah, he stopped anyone from making fun of Muhammad. But did he? Did he Muslims? We defend thee this is the first translation, by the way. It says, we defend thee from those who they make fun of you, Muhammad. Did Muhammad have a, Allah defending him now? Did Allah defend Muhammad in his time? Change the translator. He will find a new translation. Allah never defend Muhammad anything. Here we go, I'm making fun of him. Right? Allah never stop people from laughing at Muhammad. And he cannot do that. If this God is true, we'll keep your promise. People making cartoon. I mean, yeah, YouTube is trying to protect Muhammad. You know, we agree. The atheists, they are in bed with the devil. Uh, liberals they are in bed with Muhammad we agree but there's billions of people they are laughing at Muhammad and Allah did not stop people from laughing at him and the word here in Arabic فينaka, which means we stop that's it nobody can do that to you Uh, anyway, hmm. let us stop here, otherwise, this is in this. So, please take a note again that we are not going to go live in the other account. Tell your friends that for now we will be in the Arabian Prophet for a certain time, and again and again and again. I remind you. If we ever lose any accounts here, Arabian Prophet, Christian Prince, it doesn't matter. We will go live in, in air again. And always you can go to my page in Patreon to find out where I'm going to be live. The beach? Because as you see, you know, I mean, always when I receive, you know, like 
when I get like a hundred thousand subscriber, seventy thousand, eighty thousand, they make me lose the account. Otherwise, by now I should have like millions of subscribers, literally millions. But because they are evil, you know, they think they can make me give up, make me like, oh, I lost my account after all. Who care? I what I care for that I will go live and I will teach. And actually, you know, if I don't have an opportunity to go live, then I will write books. Muslims, which one you will like? Me writing books or going live? <laughs> Trust me, my books will be more horrible because they will be more professional. So live or not, still we are going to make Muhammad put him in his, in his place. We will show everybody how he is. So anyway, if we lose an account, please remember you go to Patreon and you see the last link I posted for coming live. That will be the link I'm going to. It's not really necessarily to be here or the name of the account is not important. What is important is I will be live you join. All right. So I love you all. And I want to say thank you all for being here. And I will see you soon again. Christ is Lord. Islam is a scam. And we believe it to be true for it is true the Lord is our Savior and the devil Muhammad will never be able to stop us from following the Messiah a person who have no ethic a person who have no dignity a person who have no God a person even the Muslims agree that he was not Abrahamic he did not know even what the faith of Abraham and the confirm that the, the Quran confirmed that why in the world anyone want to follow such a evil person he claimed that he is going to have sex with Mary, the mother of Jesus. Any person who respect himself for a second will not even say such a word. What kind of a person he want to have sex with the wife or the sister of Pharaoh? Or the sister of Noah? What's wrong with this guy? He is evil. He is the devil. He want to be God to be worshipped. He changed his name. From Qatham to Muhammad, the praised one, for he's trying to erase Jesus from your life. He is trying to replace God, the true God, by him. The filthy Muhammad, he claimed that he is a ser servant of God, but in reality, he is the one who wants people to worship him. And this is what happened to the Muslims. They claim that Muhammad is a servant of God, but if you insult their God, they don't go angry. If you insult Muhammad, they eat your life. They are possessed with the devil Muhammad. And we are here to free them from his position. Thank you. May the bless you. And see you soon again. Take care. I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. Quran has mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brother asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. In the prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is, after all, why they crucified him. 